Hello there everyone, I hope you've been doing well. As you can see, I've got a new little toy over here because uh, Jeff from PTS for Life, he advised me um, when I started my YouTube channel like a few weeks ago, he said, make sure you invest in, in good audio and everything else like an intro, outro and all of the other stuff that comes along with, with time, but audio is very important. And so I decided, all right, let's try this out. Uh, do let me know if it is actually better. I mean, I have notice in in videos of mine that i can hear sometimes the fan of the computer in the background and other background noises so i do hope this uh, makes it a bit more pleasant on the ear to listen to my ramblings all right so today i wanted to talk about something i've been struggling with with many many years uh, i definitely can do much better now but i think it is an interesting subject um also for people maybe not ever having been in Scientology, but from my point of view, obviously I have my Scientology background and that sort of explains to me, I think, my attitude towards this. And I'm talking about doing something fun for the sake of just doing it. What I mean is that you do something without the intention of actually getting a result, of actually achieving something sp uh, particular that somehow will will change your life or, or push you forward your, your goals in your life or whatever. You just do something for fun, like watching a movie, for example. Just watching a movie because you feel like it. Or playing a computer game. Or just, you know, going out, uh, taking a walk in a park. Uh, going out uh, bowling, for example. That's something I actually quite like doing, although I'm terrible at it, to be honest. But I quite like doing that. And um, things like that, you know, like just do it for the, f for the sake of fun. And that is something um, that is just simply not allowed in Scientology. I mean, it is literally not allowed. There is a policy. I will put it up on the screen so you can look at it. I'm going to read it from my book here. Uh, it is, by the way, from the um, Introduction to Scientology Ethics books book. If you happen to have this in your library, then first of all, I'm sorry that you spend that money. Uh, but if you do, it is on page 228. The policy is called Indicators of Orgs. And and um, so it talks about orcs and things like that. Very interesting. And then afterwards, on 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 page two hundred and thirty, so two page later, there I it talks about dilettantism. All right. So let me read this out to you. Dilettantism, dilettant, one who interests himself in an art or science merely as a pastime and without serious study. In an orc, this manifests itself with People should live a little. One needs a rest from Scientology. One should do something else too. All that kind of jazz. It also manifests itself in non-consecutive non scheduling. Part-time students. Because things are different in this town. And people can come only two nights. Ask them what they do the other nights. Bowling? Horse racing? Boy, you better mow the case folders of stuff. You better... Uh, you have a suppressive about maybe six Scientology that saves lives is a modern miracle is being compared to bowling get it the orc or portion just isn't serious Scientology is an idle club to it an old ladies sewing sewing circle and to somebody signing people up for training and auditing are just con games they put over on the public Right, sorry for uh, stumbling a little bit over there, but you get you get it, right? So it's basically saying uh, dilettantism is not is not permitted, and being a dilettant, one who interests himself in an art or science merely as a pastime and without serious study, yeah. So it's basically like a hobby, like if you like if you sew or if you do crocheting, something I have done in the past as well. I quite enjoy crocheting, although I haven't done it for a while. <coughs> Excuse me, and um, or oh, my art. I do my art. I, 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 I think I would say about about myself that I do do it on a, on a certain serious level, on a certain professional level, but I didn't study art, you know. I didn't I don't go out and really promote myself properly. I don't I don't do that sort of thing. To me it is more <coughs> something as a balance to to work, you see. I work as a chef and it's a very very tough environment. Um a lot of stress, lots of running around, lots of pressure. And doing my art, that is uh, a place of calm for me. I'm just on my own. I've 
some music in the background or maybe not no music at all and I just paint and I just take my time and I don't pressure myself I don't say I need to finish this today I need to finish this this week no I just go for it and if I don't want to paint this particular painting that's fine I'll just put it aside and pick up another one there's no pressure with it and that is a beautiful balance to working in the kitchen because in the kitchen it's just only pressure it's a lot of hard work pressure physical as well and the painting is a very very light light activity it's very fun it's very casual and but this sort of attitude is not allowed in Scientology uh, you can see Hubbard even says basically you cannot uh, basically Scientology is the most important thing in the world is what it says here right it says um, <coughs> Scientology that saves lives really is a modern miracle is being compared to bowling so He's saying Scientology isn't a hobby, isn't something you do in the past time. It is something you need to dedicate yourself to utterly. And so the whole idea of doing something for the sake of itself, for just for fun or whatever, is not permitted in Scientology. Because this is the attitude. If you have time to do something that doesn't actually further the goals of Scientology or doesn't further your own personal progress in life or whatever, why would you do that? Why don't you do something like Scientology, which actually does these things? This is the attitude, and it's a very intense attitude. And, and that is not to say that while I was in Scientology as a public uh, or very, very, very brief period when I was a staff, and at the time when I was a cadet and then a SEAL member, that I didn't have fun, that I didn't have moments of fun, of course. Of course I had fun, of course I had times where, where I enjoyed myself, but these were simply byproducts of what I was doing, you see, because everything you do has to have a purpose, a goal, a reason why you do it. Even things like, for example, when you get rewarded for doing, having done something right. There's another policy in, in Scientology called rewards and penalties, where Hubbard basically talks about uh, the very basic idea that um, if you reward somebody who did something well, well, the person will obviously feel be good about themselves. They will feel s they feel like they've been seen, right? Oh, he, he sees I've, I'm doing hard work. And so naturally, the person will be willing to work even harder, do better jobs and things like that. But the other way around as well, if you, if you don't reward people who actually do a good job after a while, they, they don't really see the point anymore. They, they decline with their pro productivity. Or also if you reward people who do a bad job, so I'm sure we've seen this all in, 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 in workplace or whatever. Somebody who, who uh, you know, has a good connection with the boss, with the superior or whatever, and then they get certain benefits, even though they don't even do anything particularly great. They don't work particularly hard. They don't do anything great. Maybe they even do maybe a bad job, and then you ha end up having to do all the work that they don't do, for example, but that person is being rewarded in some form, but you are completely being ignored. I'm sure you've seen this. I've, I've, I've had this happen to me. It's, it's normal. It happens, right? And he talks about that. And so even if you get a reward, so let's say your reward would be, for example, when I was in a cadet org, and the statistic, because that's how you are being judged on whether you uh, have been a good little boy or girl, is by your statistics. If the statistic of the organization from the cadet org was upset, then on Saturday evening, we were allowed to watch a movie. Now you could argue watching a movie doesn't benefit any any anything. Like even like if it's not an educational movie of some sort, if you're just watching, I don't know, Mission Impossible because there's Tom Cruise in it, it doesn't gain anything. However, the reason why we're watching a movie is because we're being rewarded. So there is a purpose behind there because the purpose behind it is okay, they enjoy their time so that they will produce again better and better. So there's always um, always a narrative there, always a reason why you do something, and it's always to, to bring up statistic to gain, um, you know, whatever it is, whatever the goal is, you know, like obviously in Scientology it would be to get more clears, more OTs, uh, um, uh, sell courses, sell materials, um, expand, and all of that. So anything you do that helps that, is obviously something worth doing. And anything outside of that is dilettantism uh, and it is not approved. I'll give you a beautiful little example, a story. When I was uh, a SEAL member, 
uh, as a senior member, you're supposed to go and study as well. You're su supposed to go study courses uh, and complete courses, do auditing and things like that. Um, and you don't have to pay for it because you're, you're as you, you work for Scientology. Once you leave uh, the SEOC, you get a freeloader bill and you basically have to pay for all the services you've t taken, right? Because you have cancel your contract because your contract is for one billion years so after 10 years of being there you say you know what i've seen it you're going obviously you have broken the contract so you have to pay for it it's not legally binding but you know they will definitely m make sure you pay for it but anyway while you're in the seok you're supposed to do courses now when i was in the seok i was in the galley i was working in the kitchen and there was absolutely no way i could do courses there was just no way i didn't have any time and um, nonetheless, there was time, for example, during my lunch time or dinner time, while I was eating lunch or dinner, while I was um, in the bus from the place where we lived, which was Walsh Manor to, to St. Hill. This was maybe a 20 minutes ride. So there, during that time, I could could do studies. However, you're not uh, supposed to do studies of, of Aaron Hubbard material when you are tired, when you haven't had enough sleep. And because then you fall asleep, you, you, you will fall asleep anyway because you're tired. But if you fall asleep and you read something, this in Scientology would mean you have a misunderstood word. So if you then study, but you haven't had enough sleep, it might be a false indication that you have a misunderstood word, right? Because you're falling asleep, so people will assume, ah, you have a misunderstood word. But if you didn't have enough s sleep, then naturally you will be falling asleep. So that is why you're not allowed to do studies uh, or go on auditing and things like that if you haven't had enough sleep. So what I did instead, instead of reading Hubbard books, there was actually a book about herbs that I found in the library. It, it, it's not a Hubbard book. Uh, there, there are there's a library in at Saint Hill, and there's a library in Walsh Manor. And of course, the majority of books there are books from Hubbard, but there are many other books that have nothing to do with Scientology. And that you can borrow, and the, and I don't remember which library it was, if it was the one in Saint Hill or the one in Walsh Manor, but there was a book in German about herbs, and I really liked that. I thought it was really interesting because, um, you know, because Hubbard always and Scientology in general always talks about oh, uh, uh, all these drugs, psychiatry drugs and stuff like that to heal and a simple cold and a a ailment and so on and so forth. That's all bad and so on and so forth. And I thought to myself, okay, well, let me read how they did it back in the days. And this lady, her name was um, Maria Treben. And I think she was born like in 1920, and then she, she died in the 70s, 80s. And she wrote this book. And she writes about the old methods of how to heal, how to use herbs and things like that. And I started reading it. And actually, I started making uh, creams and, and oils based on that. And I actually got a KR, a knowledge report, from my superior, Christopher Simons, who who was with me working in this I, I, in the galley in in the kitchen for for cooking the food for the staff, because he was basically saying, I don't remember if he used the word uh, that I'm being a dilettant or whatever. I don't I don't remember that word specifically, but he was basically saying, I'm wasting time, I'm wasting the time I could be using for studying, reading these things that have nothing to do with Scientology and doesn't further the goal of Scientology, right? However, I obviously had to point out to him, well, I'm not allowed to study anything else because I'm too tired. I can't actually study. I don't actually have time during the day to go actually on course and study. So outside of that, I want to read something that in my mind, in some way, was uh, justified because it was talking about medicine, but like natural medicine, like something that a Scientologist would approve of. You know, many Scientologists, they believe in uh, in 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 very alternative kinds of medicines that you know some of it may be leg legitimate some not i'm not here to comment on if it actually works or not but they are very hi hide uh, hi hyped up on on all these alternative kind of medicine because they want to get away from the regular drugs that you would take you know and so in my mind i thought i was doing something good by doing that and during this time i actually as i said i made oils i made I didn't make tinctures, but I made creams and salves and things like that. And I actually used this on different staff members while I was there. Because St. Hill has a vast amount of fields. And there was um, the guy in charge of, all, or, of taking care of the fields and stuff. His name was Ian. I don't remember his surname, but he was from New Zealand. And he was, he was a very eccentric, funny guy. 
and he actually studied bot uh, 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 bot botany. So I had the book, and the book had obviously the 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 the, the words, the the names of these plants and these herbs in German, but they also had the Latin name. And so I thought I'll show him the Latin name. Maybe he he knows it. And he oh yes, I know this one. And he he would t point out exactly where it was. So he knew all of his Latin names. And most of these herbs that you would use are considered to be weeds. They are weeds that just grow and you can't get rid of them. So he would tell me, oh yeah, it's right over there. I've been trying to get rid of it for 20 years. It's still coming and so on and so forth. And then I would gather the stuff from there and I would actually make stuff and I would give that to the uh, staff members that I knew had, had I don't know, whatever it was. It one, some, one guy, for example, had his foot, uh, the sole of his foot had a cut, had a very deep cut. I don't remember how that happened, but anyway, I made him. I made him a, a poultice, uh, a warm poultice every night. I made him a warm. No, not every night. I think every second night I made him a warm poultice. So after after a whole day of work, I would pick up, pick up those herbs, come home, to to wash manner, go into the kitchen because I had the key to go into the kitchen. Nobody else was allowed to go in the kitchen. I would boil the water, put the poultice in it, put the herbs on it, put it on his foot, and we did this for a while. And it actually genuinely helped him. Now. Did it help because of the herbs? Did it help just because of the warm poultice? I have no idea. In any case, it helped. And there were a couple of other incidents where I was able to help somebody with a, you know, like somebody had something with the elbow. It was a bit stiff. So I made him an oil for that. And that helped them as well. So I generally thought, you know, I was doing something good. And then my superior, Christopher Simons, and yes, I'm going to shame him. He wrote me a KR because of, of me doing that. Because I was doing something that wasn't strictly Scientology. So, this is just a little story to, to, to show you how it was when I was uh, working for Scientology. And outside of that, when I left uh, the CIRC in 2012 and then mentally left Scientology in about 2016-17, you know, uh, I've had a very difficult time and I always felt guilty when I, I dared to uh, play a video game or... or read a book that is that is ju just some fiction book that has nothing to do with anything um you know like for example terry pratchett he's my favorite author he's ri written many many books and you know it doesn't further my own knowledge you know if i were to read a book about i don't know science history mathematics you know i could then say oh well this helps my education in some form right but if i just read a book about elves and 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 dragons and vampires or whatever how how would that help me in any way so it took me a while it took me years to sort of get over myself to say you know what just enjoy doing something for the sake of doing it and now i can do that now when i have time off from work because when you <laughs> it's so such a novel thing uh, you actually get time off from work if you're ill you're being told you better stay home. Don't don't come in. You know, particularly when you work in a kitchen, because uh, y you you have to do uh, you're working with with foods. You're working with other people who work with food, and then if you are ill, you might contaminate in some form the food, obviously, or you can make other people ill. And then there are more people who can't work. And in kitchens, there has always been that way. It's always very short staffed. You know, so um, you you get s sent home. You have to stay home, and uh, or you just have time off because you you have to have time off you only work five days a week usually and uh, so i have two two days off and in the past i would try to do something productive with these two days you know and even when i was done with scientology in 2016 17 whatever it was and i said to myself okay i'm not a scientologist anymore i still struggled with that to try and to 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 just do something for the sake of doing it and um yeah i just wanted to to talk to you guys about this because I also find it interesting and and trying to think about like is this because of my Scientology upbringing or is it just my characteristic is this the way how I am because I have met other people who have never heard about Scientology and they have this sort of thing as well like this for example uh, perfect uh, being being trying to do everything perfect everything exactly right you know um, it was much worse in the past. It is much better now. I, it doesn't disturb me. It doesn't annoy me anymore if something isn't s in center of something, if something is not quite symmetrical. It doesn't annoy me anymore. In the past, it would really, I would get very distracted by it. I had to go there and correct it to make sure that it is the right way that it is supposed to be. And these sort of things, I really don't know. Is it because of my, my upbringing in Scientology? Because I've, I know uh, other people or I've seen other people on YouTube 
uh, having grown up in Scientology or having having had to do with Scientology, and they have the same sort of struggles, but then others don't have a problem with that whatsoever. So I don't know. It's pro it probably is a combination of both, and considering that it has improved certain things, um, like for some of this this thing with it being having to be symmetrical and in exactly in the middle and all of this sort of thing that has improved much much more with me. I, it's not it doesn't bother me anymore that much. I'm assuming it has it has to do in some part with Scientology because I'm I'm I have much less to do with it now, so I'm assuming that that is the case. I don't know. In any case, I've I've managed to 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 um, arrange my life in a way so that I can deal with these sort of problems that I have. And um, yeah, anyway, so I wanted to talk to you guys about uh, about that. I hope you found that interesting, educational, perhaps even. And maybe even slightly amusing. Um, if you liked it, please uh, do be a good little boy and a, a good little girl, and hit the like button. Do subscribe if you find my rambling somewhat entertaining, and uh, have a most marvelous day. Goodbye.